Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Tuesday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and I'm um, coming at you with another video today. I have a couple of comments that I want to make on two stories I read last night and uh, one that I read earlier this morning, um, but I want to share some thoughts and opinions. Opinions, um, opinion I think is the most appropriate word to describe baseball this, this offseason because there's been so much opinion and so little news to share. Um, but uh, reading Mets blog yesterday, um, I stumbled across two stories um, that I wanted to talk a little bit about and uh, a third that I read again this morning that I want to, want to share some ideas and thoughts about as well. So the first story was about uh, TJ Rivera, um, the the sort of forgotten man, I guess. Um, TJ Rivera coming off of Tommy John surgery uh, because, you know, that happens to infielders. Uh, <laughs> but TJ Rivera will be back in May, he's hoping. Um, and, you know, he's an inexpensive player. Um, he He's a utility type player, but he's proving that he can hit. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if he fits on the team, um, but I think he's... I think he would fit somewhere. I'm just not sure where. I'm just not sure it's with the Mets um, exactly. But I do think he's a hitter, and I do think he'll be a nice guy to come off the bench um, when and if he returns um, this year. I do hope, however, that the Mets are not counting on him to be any kind of a starting player or an everyday player because he's just he's just not that. So. Uh, the second thing I saw yesterday, which which sort of surprised me at first glance, but then it, it, I thought more about it, and I sort of agree with it, <clears throat> and it was Yoana Cespedes being named by MLB Network as the second best left fielder in all of baseball, and that that was really surprising to me um, when I again when I first saw it, particularly because he's coming off a season last year where he missed. In 81 games, he only played literally 50% of a season. So he, he, you know, there's there's not a an immediate like last year number uh, or last year's numbers rather to uh, to look at and say, dude, this guy is the number two uh, left fielder in all of baseball. Um, however, when you look a little bit more closely at the numbers, uh, and MLB uh, Network did uh, did look at slugging percentages amongst outfielders since the beginning of 2015. Cespedes is number five on that list, and he is the first left fielder to appear on that list. So uh, I don't know that it's out of the question to say that Cespedes, if he's healthy, and there's that magic word again, uh, if he's healthy and if he can stay on the field for 155 games or 150 games even, um, he's easily going to put up the numbers that he profiles to put up when he plays a pl plays a full season. Um, last year he would have hit 90. He would have driven in 95 runs, uh, had something like 32 home runs, um, had a uh, his normal around 300 batting average, uh, slugging percentage in the 530s or so. You know, you you spread that across the full season, and those are good numbers. Those are really good numbers. Um, if he can stay on the field, there's no question to me that. He is the backbone of this offense, of this Mets offense right now. And I hate to say it, but if he misses 81 games again, I think the Mets season can be kissed goodbye. I really do. I do believe that Cespedes is the key uh, to, to this season's success. Um, and I'm saying that mainly because I don't think the pitching can be as bad as it was last year. So I think the pitching is going to improve. So the, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk a little bit about this morning was um, some commentary from Esdrubal Cabrera, whose uh, option the Mets picked up, as we all know, for, uh, for this season. Cabrera is right now penciled in to be the starting third baseman for the Mets. He spent a lot of time at third base last year. Um, he did okay. Uh, but as I have commented here many times, I don't believe that Cabrera is a major league third baseman. Um, and I'm apparently not, not the only one to think that. Cabrera himself thinks it. In fact, he said today, or I guess last night, that he'd be far more comfortable playing second base next season versus third base. And, uh, you know, as a shortstop who's aging, whose range is dropping, um, I, I don't know if... I don't know if third base is more appropriate for him or if second base is where he's going to need to be a little bit more mobile to get to his left and right um, to field balls, but the defensive numbers don't lie. 
He doesn't have a ton of experience at third base. He's got something like 500 games at second base. Um, he's got a positive UZR rating at second base. So he's in. He's certainly profiling, at least statistically, to be a better second baseman. And so to me, that opens the door once again to revisit the very obvious solution to this problem. Uh, Mike Moustakis is still a free agent, guys. The Mets have got to get Moustakis. There's no reason not to get him. Um, <laughs> he can play third base. He can move Cabrera to second base. Look, if you're going to spend money on a free agent, all right, and you're going to have to choose between, and I like Neil Walker, I like Neil Walker, but if you're going to have to choose between Neil Walker and Mike Moustakis as the one free agent, that the bat that the Mets are going to go out and get, get Moustakis, period. I mean, there's no to me, there's no comparison. Moustakis is a better defender at third base than Walker is at second base. It makes no sense to me uh, to consider Walker over Moustakis. It just doesn't make any sense. So... Uh, the other part about that, though, and this is something I want to mention because I did read it on Mets blog, and it was uh, Matt Cerrone's idea to, instead of investing in another bat and another either third baseman or second baseman, to instead go out and get Lance Lynn or Alex Cobb. Um, I think it was Alex Cobb. Like, maybe I'm getting the name wrong. The, um, the, the pitcher who I can't... Maybe it was Alex Cobb. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The idea that Cerrone had was forget about the offense go out and get a pitcher because the track record shows that the Mets have been um, in short supply of pitching depth and go out and get a pitcher who's going to be a stabilizing force in the rotation like a, a Lance Lynn uh, who can give you 200 innings uh, who's not going to be an ace but who's going to be a solid cornerstone type guy who can who can always pick up the ball every fifth day and avoid spot starts from guys who just shouldn't be spot starting. Um, the idea at second base, then, uh, that Cerrone uh, proposes is Luis Guillaume, who is the guy who at this point is best known for catching um, that uh, bat that went flying in spring training last year. Um, Guillaume was the guy that caught it with, his, with one hand in the dugout. So um, the, the, the numbers or the, the report on Guillaume, rather, is that he's a really solid defender, uh, gold glove caliber defender. And the, the thought process behind all of this is be strong up the middle. If you have Ligaris in center field, if you have Rosario at shortstop, if you have Guillaume at second base, that makes a really good triumvirate there who can, can really be a solid middle infield presence, improving the defense and improving by proxy the pitching. Um, I like Cerrone's idea, but if I had to choose, I still think I would choose Moustakis just because I, I want the Mets to have a legit third baseman. What do you guys think? Do you like Cerrone's idea about going with Guillaume at second base and picking up a starting pitcher? Or do you think it's more important to bolster the offense, get a third baseman like Mike Moustakas? You know what I think, but I'm interested in hearing what you think. So hit me up on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met, or you can comment below in the comments section. Uh, I thank you for watching the video. Sorry it went a little long, but uh, as always, thanks for watching, and let's go Mets.